Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Dad's Bedtime Stories. When we left off last night, you were on your way back from the dinosaur planet after leaving a portal on it so you could visit whenever you want. Just remember to get as comfortable as possible, sink down into your bed, get cozy with your blanket and your pillow, close your eyes, and just imagine yourself doing what the character in the story does. Beep, beep, beep. Alert, uh, you think. Why do you have to be so loud, you ask the spaceship. We are approaching Earth. Get ready, we will have to land soon. We only have ten more minutes for your robot replacement until he suddenly melts into a big pile of goo. Again, spaceship, I'm really not sure why you would design a robot that turns into a big pile of goo after that short period of time. I made a mistake, says the robot. Sorry. Uh, Don't worry about it. Okay, let's get back down to Earth. You watch through the view screen as Earth becomes bigger and bigger and bigger until it takes up your whole view. You watch as the ship passes through the Earth's atmosphere and then starts flying above the clouds. It dips down below the clouds and flies over a whole bunch of trees and forests and fields. And eventually, you see your house in the distance. The ship gently lands in your driveway. After getting out of the spaceship, your parents run out. Hey, where were you? I thought you were inside cleaning your room. Oh, uh, yeah, I probably was there, you say. But now I'm out here. Well, that makes perfect sense to your parents. Come on in. It's time to have dinner. You go in, but before you have dinner, you feel like you better go check on the robot. You walk towards your room, slowly open up the door, and that's where you see it. Hi there. Uh, hi. Whoa, you cleaned my room really, really well. I live to serve. Now, there's just one thing I really, 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 really need to tell you before school tomorrow. It's very important. Oh yeah, what's that? I... (laughs) Suddenly the robot starts to spark and pop, and then it just disintegrates into a big pile of goo on the ground. Ew... How am I going to clean that up? The spaceship, which has shrunk down and is sitting in your pocket, pops out. I'll take care of it. Okay. Thanks, spaceship. I'm going to go eat dinner. Your parents have made your favorite meal. You sit down at the kitchen table and you eat it slowly and carefully, tasting every bite. You remember what it tastes like, and you enjoy it. When you're done, you go to bed, and the next morning you realize that you have to go to school. Oh, I wonder what it was that the robot was trying to tell me. Uh, I don't know. Oh well, I'm sure it couldn't be too important, you think. You head out the door, jump on the bus, and ride it all the way to school. When you arrive at school, you go inside and sit down in your class with all of your friends. 
The teacher arrives and says, Good morning, class. Today, we are going to hear our first presentation from our volunteer student. Hey, you, get up here. The teacher is looking directly at you. Me, you say? You want me to get up and do a presentation? Yes, of course. You volunteered yesterday. You were so excited about it. It was... It seemed like you'd had something very special planned. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, you say. I just... Can I go to the washroom first? Oh, of course. Be right back. You run out of the room and go to the washroom. You pull the spaceship out of your pocket. Spaceship! What are we going to do? I was supposed to give some sort of amazing presentation, and I, I don't know how to give any kind of amazing presentation. I have an idea, says the spaceship. Uh, yeah, what's that? We could take your class to the dinosaur planet on a field trip, but it takes forever to get there. We can't do that today. Yes, we can. Remember, I put a portal in place. Yeah, but we didn't have the other portal, you say? Last night, I put the other portal in the shed outside your parents' house. You put another portal in the shed outside my parents' house? Well, like, the uh, spaceship... What are you talking about? Like, how would I get the whole class there? Don't worry, says the spaceship. I will take care of it. Okay, you say. I guess I trust you. You go back into your classroom. And you greet the class. Hey, class. Uh, today, we're gonna... Um, I'm gonna do a presentation. And the presentation's gonna be on dinosaurs. Uh, says the class. Uh, no, no, no. It'll be really exciting, you say. It's about dinosaurs and... And... And then you hear in your ear. Tell them to come outside for a field trip. And then you say to your class, We gotta go outside to see what I'm talking about on a field trip. Come on out, everyone. Well, this is highly irregular, says the teacher, but I guess we better follow him. Come on, class, follow me. You and the class all walk outside. When you get there, you see a giant metal bus. Inside the bus is an incredibly strange looking bus driver. The bus opens, and the driver steps up and says, Welcome to my bus. Come on in, kids. What is going on, you think? All of the kids get on the bus along with the teacher. You get on at the end, and you hear in your ear, Don't worry, Oliver. It's me, the spaceship. I've turned into a bus, and I created a holographic bus driver. Okay, that's really weird, but all right, good job. Where are we going now? We are going to drive to your house and go through the portal to the dinosaur world. Okay, I, let's get going. Suddenly the bus slams on the gas and it burns out of the parking lot as fast as it can go, swinging around the corner without even really looking. All of the kids on the bus cheer in excitement. Woo! This is so exciting, they say. The bus races down the road, jumping over hills, throwing the students without their seatbelts up into the air and then landing back on the bus. 
the bus driver brakes really hard and turns into your street. Soon he's approaching your house. He bursts into the driveway and then he hits a little button on the ceiling of the bus and you see the door to your shed open. Inside is a giant blue circle. Uh, where are we going exactly? Uh, the teacher asks. I think we better take us back to the school. What's, what's that blue portal thingy? The bus driver flies right through the portal and suddenly you and all of the students are on the dinosaur planet. You look left and right and you're surrounded by dinosaurs. Whoa, everyone says. Where are we? How, how are you doing this? Oh, don't worry. It's just a, just a virtual reality thing I programmed in my shed. It's not real. Don't worry about it at all. Seriously, not real. Not real at all. Oh, well, this is still really cool. The bus tours around the dinosaur planet, showing the children long necks, triceratops, raptors, until suddenly they hear <sighs> When they look out the front of the bus, they see a Tyrannosaurus Rex running straight for them with its mouth wide open, big enough to just about swallow the bus. The kids scream. We're all gonna die! <laughs> oh, don't worry, class. I'm sure we're perfectly safe, says the teacher in an accent that's ever-changing. Um... Yeah, we're totally safe, you say, because it's a virtual reality program. <laughs> Just before the Tyrannosaurus bites on the bus, the other Tyrannosaurus that you put the control collar on in your last visit jumps out and headbutts it out of the way. The bus screeches to a halt. And you and your class witness an amazing Tyrannosaurus battle. The two Tyrannosauruses, which I'm sure is the correct plural way to say it, start attacking each other. Your Tyrannosaurus jumps on top of the other one. The other one throws him off and hits him with the tail. Yours returns it with a tail whip that's much stronger and gets the Tyrannosaurus right in the eye. The Tyrannosaurus starts to cry and runs away weeping, afraid of your Tyrannosaurus. Your whole class cheers. All right, hey, let's get off the bus, one of them says. Let's go look at it. No, you say, you can't get off the bus. This is a virtual reality program. Um, and it's just about over. We have to head back right now. Driver, get to it. Yes, sir, says the driver in a very strange voice. The bus suddenly slams on the gas again, spins around in a circle, headed at full speed straight to the portal. It's bumping over terrain, swerving around rocks, off-roading. The kids on the bus are bumping up and down incredibly quickly. Suddenly it jumps through the portal and you're transported back through your shed into your front yard. The bus keeps driving, swerves around the corner incredibly fast, down the road, jumping over hills, shooting up into the air and landing with a hard thump as the kids jump up and fall back down onto their seats. It's a crazy ride until the bus swerves around and stops at the school and the door opens. Class, it's time to get out, says the teacher. And let's do it quickly. The teacher leads the class out and you go after her. You look back at the bus and say, thanks spaceship, that was amazing. 
but the rest of your class can't stop talking about what a great field trip that was and how amazing your virtual reality presentation was. It was so cool, they say. I wish I could see that every day. You go back to class and the teacher starts talking about something, but honestly, you're feeling a little tired. You put your head down on the desk, you close your eyes, and your eyelids feel incredibly heavy. You just let them shut. You let all the noise around you just develop into background noise. And drown it all out as you let yourself fall asleep.